For KMMR, carry players have somewhat of an idea about hitting creeps properly, but beyond that, they are amazingly clueless. One of the most prevalent issues is being disciplined and approaching the high ground. I've seen countless Reddit posts complaining about the state of the game in terms of pushing high ground, and this is a visual example of it. For those who don't know me, I'm a 9 KMMR coach who's doing a series that covers the mistakes of carry players in every MMR bracket, and in this analysis, I will go over a replay of 4K MMR player where I'll explain advanced farming patterns that go beyond CS goals, playing the map properly with your high net worth, and having a good approach towards closing out the game. These are of course the big things, but this analysis will go over pretty much every small detail of the game. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to look at is your early itemization. So far it does seem fine, but the thing that you really want to focus on for the viewers and for the player is you need to look at your lane matchup and then figure out what items you want, right? So when we look at their lineup, LC is their core, Draw Ranger is their core, and Invoker is their core, Disruptor is support, and CM is also support. So when we look at their lineup, it's very obvious that LC is going to be off lane, and he's probably going to be accompanied by either Disruptor or CM. So in this case, these heroes will cast spells. LC is going to cast her Q, Disruptor is going to cast his Thunder Strike, Glimpse, or CM is going to cast Crystal Nova and Frostbite. So in this case, there's going to be a decent amount of spell usage in the lane. So having a stick is like really good. So in this case, like your early itemization is absolutely correct. The stick will help you sustain in this lane. And the rest of the items are also very fine. You, If you need physical damage, you can upgrade your circle into a Wraith Band if required. But ideally, you don't need to really exactly do that. Because LC won't really hit you that much because you're a ranged hero. But he will spam a lot of spells, so it's fine to do that. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to start doing in your games is that... So what I noticed is that you were buying these items after getting inside the game. Because of that, you waste like 5 to 10 seconds, which can be used to get a better position on the map before the game starts, right? So you need to buy these items in the strategy phase after you've seen your lane matchup, which in, case, in that case, you get 30 seconds to do that, right? So the advantage of doing that is... As soon as the game starts, you can just literally run here. When you're on Dire, you can run here and get this Watcher. By getting this Watcher, you provide information to your team. You get this Watcher and you just like literally hide behind this tree line near the ward, right? So when you see the enemy taking this Watcher or being near here, you will have information. You can just like run back and just like give them the bounty rune. This gives your team some information and they can fight for this bounty or this bounty because they know that there's multiple heroes here. So if you go here, there's a very good chance you'll get both the bounties or might even get a kill or two, right? And if they don't come, you can get it for free. So, but if you don't do that, then it's gonna like bite you, right? Okay, so you're just chilling here. Let's just fast forward in this point. Okay, so you're asking your winner to take it because you don't want to find yourself in a bad position. But this is something that should have been done like a minute ago. Alright, so you're taking the Watcher. The enemy's not coming, so you're probably going to get two runes. One rune, but that's fine. Alright, let's see the laning phase now. Okay, so in this matchup, it's just like you need to have an understanding of how exactly they will kill you, right? So if it's like Disruptor plus LC, which I guess it is because you can see from the ward that CM is 5. So... If you're like slightly even out of position in this lane and you get a glimpse, you could probably die. They have a lot of nuke damage, right? They have Thunder Strike, which is going to be a lot of nuke. They have LCQ, which is going to be a lot of damage for you. So you need to prepare for it, which means that you need to be prepared in terms of having region items. You should have, uh, like, you should, you can even buy uh, raindrops if you want. Like, all these items will help you sustain in the lane. Like, at, you need to stay in the lane. Till you get enough levels and items to go sustain yourself in the jungle, which is usually like level 6 and maybe your mask plus treads, right? Until then, you're just gonna chill. Alright. Okay. So the first thing that you should always do whenever the lane starts is, as Dire, you don't exactly have the wave in a bad position. Like, for example, on Radiant, the wave, if you block the wave, the wave ends up inside your tower, right? And if you try to aggro these shapes onto your range, the wave ends up inside your tower and the lane pushes in. That's not exactly the best... Um, way to play the lane when you're playing carry on the radiant side. But on dire, that does not happen, right? So the wave always ends up outside of your tower range. The advantage that that gives you is that you can always aggro these melee creeps onto this range creep. And when you do that, you open up opportunities for different things, right? So the way this lane starts is that it's advantageous for the enemy offlaner because since he aggros, he aggros on his range creep, and when his range creep dies, this basically means that your lane is going to push into him. In terms of creep equilibrium, we want the wave to be near us 
for as long as possible, except for two occasions, which I will go over later on, right? So in this case, it's like, if he aggro's on the range and I don't do it, what happens is that my lane is going to push into him and it's, it's going to be in a position where I don't feel comfortable, right? Especially in a lane where you're going to be against Disruptor, right? If the lane is like pushed into you, he can always glimpse you if you try to run away. So in that case, the only option that you will have is to either go pull and skip out on a wave or you will have to go jungle. Okay, so in this case, his aggro isn't exactly super good, but because of that position, you had to go forward and because of that, you're taking some damage. So in this case, when you see that he wants this range creep, right? And you have a spell that can mini stun him for like 0.6 second, right? Because it says it, right? I didn't exactly know how much it was, but I just know that it's a mini stun. So, but basically you need to be very creative with your spells. Like on Luna, you have this mini stun, which does damage, right? So you're gonna use it to secure creeps, but you can also use it to deny creeps. So in this case, if you use it on him, you can probably deny this range creep, right? But if you don't use it, then he's gonna secure it, right? So you need to like work on denies and all of these things. Okay, so in this situation, he aggros on the range again, right? But looking at the situation of this creep wave, right? You see that my creeps are only two, whereas he has four, but this one is probably gonna be aggroed on you, while these three will be aggroed on. Th it's gonna be a 3v2 basically. With that said, these two creeps have low HP, which means that they're gonna die really fast. So in this case, what's gonna happen is that they're gonna have a very big creep advantage, and my next wave is here, which means that their next wave is also around somewhere here. Or you could just look at the creep wave timers. If you know that, 45 basically means the creep wave is like around here. So the next wave is gonna be here in 12 seconds. So if I don't do anything about this wave, I will get double waved. And with the double wave, since my creeps are dying faster, they're gonna get level two and I will be level one. And with that advantage, they can really punish me, right? So in this case, instead of holding these creeps on me right here, what I should do is that I should drag them inside the tower. The reason why you wanna drag them inside the tower is one, you don't take damage from them. The other is that in terms of creep equilibrium, your goal is to have the same number of creeps on both sides so that neither the lane pushes into you or pushes into them. So in this case, you have a creep deficit, right? So you need to figure out a way to make it a 2v2 rather than a 4v2. So the fastest way you can do that before the next wave reaches here is by aggroing inside tower because the tower kills them really fast, right? So right here, you're just like losing a lot of HP, right? You see the situation and now it's gonna be a 7v4, right? So when I see the 7v4 situation and if I'm like LC or if I'm like Disruptor, I will ask, my teammate or my lane partner to push this lane in and then glimpse you back and then kill you, right? Which is what any good player would do here. So Yagra is backwards a bit and you see you're taking a lot of damage and now it's gonna be five creeps inside the tower where we could get pressure, right? So in this case, this guy's level two, but this guy's not level two because they fucked up a bit, right? He, instead of going on the Veno, he should have been in the same getting level two. If they get level two here on Disruptor, they could glimpse you and they could kill you, right? So you need to be careful about double waves and creep equilibrium. Just always remember and be careful about the number of creeps on both sides. Like your goal in the lane is to not have the lane pushed in, one, and have it on your side. And the other thing is that in order to do that, we need to have the same number of creeps on both sides. So neither does the lane push into them or push into us. All right, okay. So here again, you had to, since the wave is gonna enter your tower, you had to aggro these creeps, and when you do that, you have to take some damage, and they press Q, and you lose a lot of HP. And at this point, it's like, okay, your courier has, soon you're gonna buy your band of event skin. Now you wanna like look at your Venomancer. It's like, okay, he has a self, and he has only one set of tangos. Not one set, just like one tango. So right now, at this point, you need to realize the fact that we don't exactly have any region left. Like my Venom, what is he gonna, what is he gonna get? Okay, so he's getting a ring of region, which means that he's not buying any extra tangos for me. So this basically means that when I buy my band of Elven skin or my boots or whatever you go with, I need to have a set of tangos with me. And when I don't do that, I'm gonna suffer, right? So again, the reason why you're missing so many lasses is the fact that you're not looking at the number of creeps on both sides. And whenever the, the enemy has a lot of creeps inside of your tower, they, ha they have the freedom to just like dive you and deny creeps, right? If you aggro properly on the correct time, you will have some of your creeps alive which, they, which the enemy will be focused on and you can see us very easily in the tower. So if you look at your CS, it's only seven. Okay, even here I would aggro on range. So just give yourself this rule is that anytime my range creep is outside of tower range, which is basically this or like even this, I need to always aggro on it, always aggro on it, always aggro on it so that I can get my range creep killed.
Okay. Okay, this position. Now the lane is pushing in. So at this point. Okay, at this point, it's just like you could do some things, right? So let's just go back. Let's just like understand the situation of the state of the lane, basically. So I have no region. Veno has no region. And they're level two. So if I'm like out of position, basically anywhere here, they could probably kill me. Lotus is gonna spawn in a minute. So I need to be ready for that as well. But I don't have any HP, so that is gonna be hard for us to do. So what I should do here is that look at the timer, right? So it's like 2 or 10, which means this next wave is gonna be near this camp for pulling in like five to six seconds. So what I should do is that I should form this wave really fastly. And here at this point, I am not gonna go for this range creep. Instead, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna run here and pull or ask my support to pull. Like this is like a very technical lane for um, Venomancer because they can just dispel his gear, right? I know you told me that you felt like your position five was griefing hard in this game. And I would say he kind of is because you don't exactly have dispel at level one on LC you probably get it like level two or three and you can like try to do like a double gale cast or you can secure creeps with gale or you can like pull and stuff but you don't have to rely on that if you're gonna rely on that you're never gonna get out of your bracket you need to try to do some things by yourself it's just like okay at this point i understand that this lane is gonna push in i understand that my position five is not willing to uh, to pull so what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna sacrifice this creep go back here and pull this so that the next wave is near my tower again and then i can push it back even if the tower if even if the wave gets inside your tower it's fine because then it's gonna push out and then you can take lotus but since that doesn't happen what's gonna happen is that they're gonna get a pull the wave is gonna be on their face i'm gonna take a lot of damage as you can see here i'm gonna miss two creeps as well and here again right this is also another example of you not really giving a fuck about how the lane is looking so basically when you aggro these creeps backward you hold them here right look at what the lc is doing right and it's just like, if I aggro these creeps here, if I just like keep them here, I'm going to lose a lot of HP. So I have two options. One is that I can drag them inside the tower, but that's going to push my lane in, which is exactly what we want at the moment because we want to get Lotus, right? So I discussed two situations where you can actually push in the lane. One is for Lotus. One is when, when you have like a good potential on level two, which in this case, you guys don't. Like if you get level two before the enemy does, you don't really that ha have that big of an advantage because they can just like dispel Gale and stuff. But if you are in a lane where they can't do that, then maybe getting the level two before the enemy does is advantageous for you. So in this case, it's like, if I if I don't want this lane to push in, right? And I don't want to lose HP, what I can do is that I can drag the, these two creeps and just like stop this next wave here rather than taking damage and then eventually dragging them inside tower anyway, right? So now look at this position, right? That's a decent pull, but you need to like play for Lotus as well. The thing is now you guys don't have any region and you didn't look at that you didn't buy any tangos for yourself like even if you get sal there it's not that much region like you need to have a set of tangos for yourself don't rely on your position five to do it if he's not doing it just forget that he exists and just buy your own you see like this is a position where again it's just like i'm gonna try to aggro which is fine i'm gonna aggro again here which is also fine so the good thing about 4k mmr is that People are like slightly better in terms of farming and laning, but there's still like a lot of mistakes. Okay. There's no wave here, so it's fine. I'm going to go back here again. I'm going to try to aggro, but you see the situation is that now they're going to glimpse me and they're probably going to try to kill me and I'll probably just die here. Yep. Okay. So if we just go back a minute and see how this actually happened, right? Okay. So at this point, we don't have a wave. Let's just go back in again. Let's see what happens. Okay. So here we pulled, right? And we didn't get Lotus because we pulled and we got this creep. And now the wave is still here, right? So this camp didn't spawn because we didn't kill the wave in time, uh, the camp in time basically. So now you're in like a really shit position. So when that happens like this, you aggro backwards, you aggro backward again. And now when they like use their resources on Veno, you should just like farm this wave and then go back. It's like here at this point, you don't go here. You just basically wait for this camp to spawn and then you just like pull it rather than going here and die. Because look at the situation, right? Look at the look at the situation. It's like, okay, there are five creeps, right? There are five creeps, two heroes. I will only have four creeps, right? So when they have like a double range, it basically shows that if they're not good, being good basically means that this LC is gonna 
uh, draw aggro of these melee creeps onto the range and get them killed. If they don't do that, this thing is going to push back into you very easily without you losing anything. But the better thing to do here is that not rely on that and then just actually go back and pull the next wave rather than dying. Because when you die here, not only are you going to miss a lot of creeps, you're going to give them a lot of gold, right? So here it's just like, I needed to be here and I need to just like pull this and I need to just chill, you know? Let them have this wave. So when you die here, you miss one creep wave anyway, right? Rather than that, we could have just like pulled. So you come back into the lane and you have boots. But again, you don't have any regen, you don't have any raindrops, so you're gonna suffer in the lane anyway. Okay. Going forward, aggro on range. Aggro on range again. So your aggroing is like a big bit bad. So it's just like your like the thing that we discussed, right? If we don't want our lane to push into the enemy, we need to be constantly aggroing the creeps onto our range again and again as long as our range creep is outside of tower range, right? So when we do it like this, basically from a very close range, the creeps aren't gonna follow us till the range creep, right? Because of that, our aggro gets fucked. Like these creeps are not on, on our range creep. So what you needed to do instead was quite literally just stand on this range creep and draw aggro from there. So the aggro range is 500. The attack range of the range creep is also 500 if you look at it, right? So wherever you're standing, Basically, wherever your range creep is standing, you can draw aggro from there and just like uh, lead the enemy creeps to your range creep. If you do it from a closer range, they're just gonna hit you and they're gonna stop moving, right? You need you need them to like keep chasing you till you get them on the range creep, which is not happening here. And because of that, the aggro gets fucked. The lane is getting pulled pulled again. Basically, the lane is getting pushed again and now again, right? It's like. Venna should be the one pulling if he knows what he's doing, but we see that he's not, he doesn't know what he's doing, right? So when you see this wave, it's like, okay, this situation comes in again, right? I don't want to be anywhere here so I can get punished for it. So what I should do here is that I should ditch this range creep again for the greater good, right? We don't want to die, we don't take damage. And then go back here and pull this camp again. But we're not going to do that, right? And now the lane is going to push in. And when the lane is going to push in, I go back here. So since I go back here, I can't farm for shit first, right? Because I don't have any treads. I don't have any levels. So it's going to take me a long time. And then I'm going to miss out on one creep wave, right? Boom. Creep wave dying. I'm just chilling here. Very hard for me to farm this. And then again, my support is pulling, which is fine. But the problem is, since we didn't do those two, two pulls, our laning phase is just like really bad at the moment. Okay, this is good aggro. Just farm it. Right? This is nice. And then is there any creep wave here? If not, like we don't want to be here. Just go back here. If you don't have the option to pull and the wave is further in, then you can't do anything. It's better to not feed and just go here unless you see that the disruptor is not in the lane. Then it's like a different thing. Like in this case, you don't have that information. But you can like play a bit with your Venom, right? This is good, right? And now you can just like farm this wave again very easily. And then, okay, so the wave is like near me, right? Wave is near me. In this case, it's like, okay, I don't exactly need to go back because where did we see Disruptor left? It's like, okay, so one thing is that it's like seven minutes, so Disruptor is probably not here. He's probably gone for the Wisdom, and LC alone cannot kill me. So I can draw aggro of these creeps inside tower, and if you're wondering how do I draw aggro if I can't see anything, if you see any here on the map, like for example, you see this Draw Ranger on the map, you can either put your camera on him, A-click him and draw aggro, or what you can do is, you can just A click the portrait that you can see on the map. As long as you're near the creeps, it's gonna draw the aggro. So what you need to do here is draw aggro of these creeps inside tower so you can kill them really fastly and, in and from a good position and then go jungle or even pull the next wave. So you don't do either, right? You go for this uh, medium camp and then you're just chilling. So now the lane is pushing into them again. So what should I do, right? I cannot play deeper in this lane because I can get glimpsed, right? So what should I do to make the creep wave be near my tower because I still need some creeps before I can go to jungle, right? I need level six at the minimum and I need my mask. So what should I do? You should pull, pull this next wave again. I never see you pulling even once. Like people think it's only the job of my position five to do it. If he's not gonna do it, then what? You're just gonna suffer? No, 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 no. You have to adapt. Like if you see high rank players, they do it by themselves. Okay, there's no point chasing this guy. You should just farm because you don't really offer anything. So yeah, just push this lane very easily, fastly. Again, again, right? Again, same exact thing again. It's like, okay, I push this lane in 
and I would still like to very much form creep waves, right? Which is like the best form of gold. So what I should do now is just pull this wave again. By pulling this, I not only get to form this, but I also get to bring the wave back towards my tower and I can get to form a wave, which will not happen in this case. Like you're not gonna pull, right? So now you're gonna miss out on an entire wave unless he pushes in the lane, which he is, I don't know why. Maybe because he's just stupid. But basically they can just deny an entire wave if they're good. Okay, now you're farming. Okay, you see the lane is just like invokers here. Disruptor died bottom. LC alone cannot harass you, so you go for this, which is good. I like it. So the next wave is gonna be here very soon. Okay, so here is just like you're not focusing on creep wave timers, right? So look at this situation. It's just like okay, I'm farming this. And the next wave is like it's like 916, so the next wave is like around this tier two. So in like five seconds, it's gonna be in front of me. Disruptor is still dead. Invoker is bottom. LC alone cannot kill me, right? So what I should do is that I should just like farm that wave. But what I do is I go back because I'm not focused on creep wave timers. I could farm this and then go here and then go here, right? If I cut this wave from this point, drag it a bit here and farm it, I can go and farm a medium camp and then a large camp. But instead what I do is that I miss the creep wave. Don't exactly miss it, but I come back. Basically I wasted 10 seconds doing this movement from here to here and then back here. And then after this, it's just like now I'm feeling a bit uh, uncomfortable. Right? But if I cut it from here towards this side where I have vision, it would have been easy. Right? So now I have like 30 seconds left. And the next wave is going to be on my face in 3 seconds. So I should probably just farm that. Right? But imagine the previous wave, if you cut it from here, you would have 10 to 15 seconds to farm like an additional camp, which would have been a medium and large camp maybe. And then be back here. Right? Okay. So now it's just like, I have 27 seconds before the wave is going to be in front of my tower. Right? So what I should do is I take advantage of the time and farm as much as I can. So I'm going to farm this. But what's wrong with your farming pattern is you're still farming small camps. Problem is, the reason why we farmed the camps near our lane, like these side camps and these side camps, is to be able to come back to this lane again and again. But in this case, it's like we have so much time, right? The next creep is going to be here in like 24 seconds. So we have 24 seconds before we have to be back in this lane. So in 24 seconds, do we want to farm a small camp or a medium camp instead? What is going to give us more gold? A medium camp, right? So I will farm this and I will go here and then I'll be back in the lane. This way, I'm getting more gold. But when I go for the small camp, I'm just getting less gold. I'm going to go here. I'm going to farm this, right? And I still have 10 seconds, right? So in 10 seconds, I'm not doing anything. Now I'm going here, right? Even though this wave is going to be in front of me. I could very easily farm this, but I'm not doing that. Yeah, they made a smoke move and it didn't work. So in this case, it's like LC doesn't have blade mail, right? And Disruptor is not level six. LC doesn't have blade mail. LC doesn't have bl blink. Invoker is showing on mid. I think he's even cross exhaust. He's never going to rotate. He doesn't have a TP. So I should not be here. I should be in this lane. Even if they duel me, they can never kill me. Why? Because I have a lot of HP and they have no damage, pretty much. So when I go here, I'm deliberately missing creeps, even though I can read the map, right? I can see that draw and CM are bottom. I can see that Invoker is made without a TP. And I can see that they don't exactly have enough damage to duel me. And if even if he comes closer to me, I can stun him, right? It's like one factor that you can worry about is the Sunstrike. But if you play smartly, they can never reach you. So you going jungle here is like kind of like bad. You need to like stay for this wave. Okay, so this guy is... I would have let him TP, honestly. So I can have this lane for free. I'm not even kidding. I feel like if he TPs here, it's just like a waste of time for him. Okay, so again, another problem with creep wave timer. It's like you're going to farm this wave, and now you're very clueless, right? You don't know the next wave is going to be in 20 seconds. Right now it just spawns, so it's like somewhere behind this tier 2. And since you don't know that, you're going forward, wishing there would be a wave. But the wave is not here. So in this like 10 seconds that you just wasted, you could have farmed this, and you could have been like farming these two camps. Right? So your CS numbers on this hero are like kind of low. Like you could have like 100 plus right now. And even though CS numbers are very good, you should understand that if you farm 200 small creeps in comparison to farming 100 large creeps, you would have more gold with the large creeps, right? Because that's pretty obvious. So you need to like absolutely focus on these things. It's like, yeah. Like now again, you're going back, right? But the thing is, the next creep wave is in your face. You can literally just cut it from here and just like run back. What are they going to do, right? But you're going to like skip it. You're going to go here. You're going to farm this. And then you're going to go back to the lane. Again, creep wave timer. Next wave is literally here in two seconds. But since you're not focused on creep wave timers, you, are, you don't know that, right? 
Because of that, you're not farming efficiently. And if you're not farming efficiently, well, on Luna, you're going to get punished for it. Like, we should be farming this way with our madness. Like, we see everyone on the map. Like, we see LC without a blade mill, any item. How the fuck is this guy going to kill us? Right? I go here. I'm going to miss out on this creep wave, maybe. Or maybe not. But the thing is, like, because of this inefficiency, I don't know what the word is for that. But basically, you're just, like, wasting a lot of time doing these things. And then you eventually die, right? So let's just look at this again, right? This whole maneuver. Okay, so if you don't go back here, right? At this point, you don't go back here when you see these two heroes here. And you just like push the next wave in with your madness really fastly. This next wave would be somewhere here, right? Which allows you to go deeper in this jungle and farm that, right? So if you do that, this wave won't be... The creep wave won't be on your face. And if it's not on your face, you can farm backwards. But since you have to address this wave... And this next wave, they end up going on you and they kill you. Because you waited like two minutes. You, not two minutes, basically. You waited like 40 seconds to do this. Whereas you could have done this like 40 seconds ago when they were all mid. This is why you end up dying here. So efficiency, very important. It leads to a lot of things. All right. So bottom tower is alive. Uh, enemy, four of the enemy died top. Mid lane is being pushed. Mid tower is dead. So you go to the triangle. So going to the triangle is fine in this case because you have like a lot of items and everything. But you need to understand one thing. If your farming pattern does not include creep waves, your farming pattern is bad. Quite literally, right? If you're not able to farm at least one creep wave every minute, you're just going to farm slower. Because creep wave gives you the most amount of gold, right? So when you go here, right, it's like, okay, can I farm the creep wave here? Very unlikely because they could just glimpse me and kill me because it's very dangerous because this tower is not alive. So what I should do here is that when they're dead, when they've used their spells, I should TP here and try to take this tower before they're alive again. So if I can get this tower, then this map opens up for me. I can farm this camp, I can farm this camp. So when you go here, you're just like farming this, which is fine, right? It's also stacked. But here it's like, you see multiple heroes top. You need to go here and push this wave in and then farm this. Uh, basically get this tower so you can open up the map for yourself like at the moment you're not farming that fast because you cannot go and farm this creep wave because you put yourself in a position where you can't do that okay now your team is making a move you're gonna take this tower but you can't be the one to show which is correct you decide not to do that which is correct okay your team's fighting so you're near you try to join which is fine but now you just want to like okay so at this point we don't want to go top right even though it's very like it's like we can go top but right not right now like look at the timer right i didn't see the wave so based on the wave it's fine to go top but look at this right okay so it's like 1606 which basically means i have at least 50 seconds before this map is gonna refresh right so what basic what that means is that I'm gonna look at this wave and I know that this I have I still have like five to ten seconds before this wave is gonna push into my tower. So in those ten seconds I can farm this small camp and I can farm this large camp and then I can TP top, right? But I don't use that. So it's like I'm gonna farm this and then what? And then I'm not farming that fast because if I farm these two additional camps I could have gotten this as well. And now this is like very dangerous. But let's see if it works. Does LC have blink? No blink. Okay, then it's fine. You can even farm the next wave because. Uh, CM is showing here, LC is showing mid. In like 5 seconds, the next creep wave is going to be here, so you can farm it. But since you're not worried about creep wave timers, you're just not going to be able to do that. Okay. Manta usage is kind of poor. Yep, exactly. So The, re the way you want to use Manta is... Basically, your Manta usage should be used in a way that you get to farm something that your main hero cannot. So in this case, you know that these creeps are about to die by the time your Manta is going to reach here. And then the next wave is somewhere here, right? So you have to wait like 10 more seconds and then use your Manta from here and then send for the next creep wave. But if you don't know about creep wave timers, my friend, you're going to fuck it up every single time. You are going to fuck it up every single time. All right. So you're farming this. Go here. You're going to farm this. But since the Manta was useless, you can't farm the next wave, which is going to be here. And okay. So... One thing that you need to understand is that when you like displace yourself from your farming pattern, you should always go back there. For example, when this tower is dead, we need to play bottom. We have like vision here, we have vision here, we have vision here. This area is very secure and very easy for us to farm, right? So our farming pattern is basically farm ancients, farm these two side camps, push in a wave, send Manta to push another wave, rinse and repeat, right? 
But since we TP top, we're not, we're not going back here. We should go back here, farm ancients and farm and push out these lanes. This is like constantly being pressured into you, whereas this is the lane where you can pressure the enemy instead. But you're always playing the wrong side of the map. Okay, you're trying to join the fight, which is, I think, fine. But you don't have a TP. You never bought the TP after you TP top. And since you don't have a TP, after this five, fight ends, you cannot TP here. And you're going to miss out on a lot of gold. Right? A lot of gold, actually. Right? It's just like, as a Luna, I have like one... I have like 200 keeps at 19 minutes. And if you've seen my videos, you probably know that you this hero is capable of farming... 300 creeps at 22 23 minutes very easily right this is only happening why because we are missing out on a lot of farm right so this is also another example our farming patterns suck we don't know creep of timers a lot of things right so this is also another example okay so basically it's 19 11 and this creep wave is about to die because i don't have a tp and my tp is like further away right so i'm gonna get this tp here right i got this tp and by that time, this creep wave is already dead. And the next creep wave is 15 seconds away. Or like even 20 seconds. So instead of going here, TPing here, I will go here and I will farm this camp and this camp. And then be here after that. Why? Because TPing for two creeps is not worth it. Right? And then next wave, 22, right? Next wave is going to be here in 5 seconds. And I see, so I see LC at mid. The only hero who can actually catch me. CM at mid. So I have no threat. So what I need to do basically is push that wave by myself rather than sending my illusions. So when I send my illusions, I'm wasting them. The thing is, you need to use your illusions to form something that you cannot reach by your own self. It's like when I send these illusions here, this is like a safe place that I can form. But since I sent them here, I cannot send them for the next wave now because they're on cooldown, right? And when I go back here, I miss out on this camp. I miss out on this camp. I'm back here for no reason, right? So my minute is a completely wasted, right? And now I cannot farm the next wave either. My fucking Veno is farming it because I wasn't there. Sorry, I'm just like slightly angry because um, this is like quite inefficient for me to see this, right? Like you're, you're not really understanding how exactly you die on the map and you're not taking advantage of that. Like in this case, when you're showing mid here, it's actually dangerous because none of the enemy heroes are showing on the map. You have no information to work with. Like you show here, you could probably die, right? So in this case, you need to send your illusions to farm this while you farm here. So your illusion usage is like completely flawed. It's just like, you almost died, right? You almost died. This guy's a fucking moron, right? You got glimpse and then this guy could duel you and just kill you here. But this guy's a fucking moron. He wants to run back. But otherwise, you're just dead here, right? So you're not looking at the map. You're just like mindlessly hitting creeps and you're not even hitting them that well. So since you're mindlessly hitting creeps, there's like so much room for you to just like fuck up, basically. It's like, hey, you like miraculously survive, right? And when you go here, you farm this, right? And now you're going to farm this again. Like you need to be here, right? Why do you need to go mid? Like this wave is going to get pushed in. So when you go, by the time you're here, there's going to be one creep left. So why do you need to be here? Just farm this, send the illusions to farm the next wave. This is probably fine. But then it's just like, you're displaced. Like, why am I not farming bottom? Right? Why am I scared of being here? Why am I farming the shittiest camps on the map? Right? You need to literally ask yourself this, okay? I have the items that I need. I need to be playing for Roche. But if I'm not constantly pushing this wave in, how do I gain control of Roche? It's not like Roche is going to be top, right? Because it's daytime. So I need to push this lane in continuously and get control of this area of the map. But I'm not doing that. I'm on the worst possible side of the map. It's like when I'm going to go here, right? I can only farm, like, instead of farming, like, double insurance or something, I just went back here. So it's like, okay, I'm going for the Tormentor. Very nice, right? But I see the next wave, right? I can send my illusions to push in that next wave so that after we take Tormentor, we have enough time to go to base and come back. Otherwise, if, this, if these waves are pushed into us, if they are smart... They will just sneak Roche if they understand that this wave is pushed in and we took just we just took the Tormentor, right? We're going to go for this Tormentor and now everyone's low HP, so they have to go to base. But this wave is pushed into us, right? So now they can make a move on you guys. And you see, like, your team has just fucking farmed it, right? But if you send your illusions to farm it, this would never happen. So there's, like, another wave again in five to so six seconds that you're not looking at, right? And since you're not looking at that, 
this fucking centaur is gonna farm that because you're just not aware of the timings right okay so now we have this absolute control of this map we have this really good vision right i have my bkb i have everything so now we can just go rush right we can just go rush we don't have to go and uh try to throw the game here it's just like think about it like this do you have any saves in your team it's like nope no one can save me right there's no save so if they fucking blink duel you on the tower and they press catacly they just pre they press sunstrike meteor disruptor ult what's gonna happen to you i'm just gonna die right so why are we taking this risk go here send your illusions on mid or send your illusions deeper here for the next wave and then take roshan right but we are not doing that it's like we're gonna try to take this tower i guess but it's like a really bad play it's just like okay we can just take roche which is less risky right because we have this vision we're gonna have vision here we're gonna have control of this area if they come to fight us i have beacon in everything we will have a much better chance of winning that fight but since we're just like trying to trade, trade towers here and stuff it's like very dangerous honestly any good team would abuse the fact that you don't have a lincoln's right now and they would blink duel you and you wouldn't be able to pop your bkb and they would literally just burst you because you don't have a save so again, right, we just took this tower. We still have control of the Roche. Why are we not taking it? Why are we not taking it? It's just like, send your illusions mid, cut the next wave, and just take Roshan, right? But we're not going to do that, right? Because Roshan is not a concept. Instead, we're going to go high ground, right? This is very interesting to me, right? Why do we want to go high ground? It's not like we have some really high advantage that we can take focus of. It's just like, oh, my centaur's just in. So centaur's probably going to die here. Unless he stampedes out, but I think he's just gonna get rooted, so he's gonna die. But now it's like I'm just going high ground as well. Right, so centers didn't die actually. He got tornadoed when he was rooted, okay? So now I just use my BKB, right? So I just wasted my fucking BKB charge. We didn't get anything out of it. And now at this point I feel like if you're really thinking about how to win Dota, if you're really thinking about improving, you will not go high ground again. Why? Because you don't have BKB, right? You don't have your ult. Your putting yourself at a risk going high ground people say that oh on reddit oh it's so hard to go high ground we go high ground and then we just lose the game you lose the game because you don't know how to go high ground efficiently you need to minimize the risk when you're going high ground how do you do that by having the items or the abilities that make you strong off cooldown by having roshan which gives you an extra life right so in this case you don't have roshan you don't have bkb you don't have eclipse so there's absolutely no reason to go high ground uh, also the fact that the the disruptor just bought back right so the most obvious thing that you should do here is to go rush but let's see what you do so you get glimpsed right and you take a lot of damage because we're not just, just like going rush no we're still sticking around we're still sticking around why why are we sticking around our when a mancer is dead it's a 4v5 i don't have bkb i could get fucking dueled and die but this lc is so bad that he will never try it i don't know why but he will never try it but then again i'm sticking around here for what reason am i sticking around my friend, as the carry, after minute 20, you dictate the pace of the game. Like, you're the one who's going to lead your team because you have the items that you need to lead the team. You need to tell these guys, go rush, guys. I need to go rush. I don't have my BKB. I don't have my clips. I don't want to go high ground. Make the odds better for yourself, right? This is good. Very nice. And now, like, why do I TP here? Like, Roche is going to be top in 25 seconds. This lane is pushed into us. So they basically have control of this area. Shouldn't we portal and then push this lane out so that they have to address it and then we can take Roche very easily? The thing is, we're not thinking about Roche. Like, I think 4k MMR players can start farming decently well. Not super well, as you saw, right, in this game. But they can farm decently well. Like, above average, I, I would say. Like, better than 2k and 3k, of course. But they don't know how to use it, Right? They don't know how to play the map properly. They don't know how to itemize properly. They don't know how to go high ground properly. A lot of issues, right? So in this case, it's like you're not thinking about Rosh at all, which is why you're not at the correct place. You should be top pushing that lane in. But since you're not doing that, since you're not sending Manta to push this lane in, what's going to happen is that you're not going to be at Rosh in time. Right? It's like we're not thinking about Rosh. Okay, so now you're moving towards Rosh, which is good. But you could have taken this five minutes ago. Five minutes ago basically means that we would have all these auto towers. Five minutes ago basically means we would have their tormentor, right? Five, bas five minutes basically means that we only have to wait five more minutes to get the second rush now, and then we can end the game with it. Okay, now we're going rush. Fortunately, they're not going to come because the waves are pushed in, and I didn't do that. Zeus did. So now we have ages. Okay, now with ages, we need to like take all the auto towers. We need to take the tormentor and everything. Okay, so I'm going to try to take this tower. 
Um, okay. We're taking this. You're buying Kanda next. Ideally, I would say you need like Lincolns here. But since your teammates have Lincolns and they're using it on your bridges, it's fine to go Kanda here. But after Kanda, you need to like look to buy like defensive items. All right. We got this lane. Send your Manta Illusions to farm this wave. Keep using Manta off cooldown, quite literally. Need to keep the waves pushed in. Take another outer tower. We got a kill on LC. Okay. Got my multiple kills. Very nice. Okay, now LC bought back. He has duel. He has duel. He has duel. I don't have HP. I don't have a I don't have a BKB. Respect it and go back. Just farm. Like why are we still here? Why are we still here? What what the fuck are we doing? Go push this lane out. Go farm this triangle. Go farm here. Go push this lane out. Why are we here? Why are we not making the odds better for ourselves? Like, it's like, you lost this game, right? You lost this game from a very high lead. I'm probably guessing you lost this game because you kept forcing high ground. It's just like, we don't need to be here. Just go cut this wave. Go cut this wave. Push the lanes in. Respect the fact that your teammates are dead. They bought back. And I don't have the things that I need to go high ground. Push this lane in. Very nice. And now we can try to go high ground again. But then again... It's like, it's not efficient, right? We need to get a pick-off. We need to push, this lanes, push these lanes in. It's like, even if I go high ground, they can very much... It's like, you know what a good player would be for them? Is that you stand high ground, you hit this tower, they're going to duel you with, uh, like, blink. They're going to burst you once. And then after you're about to respawn, they're going to use Receptor ult on you. And then you have to press BKB and get out. It's like, we cannot go high ground, right? It's very hard. Just push these lanes in. Rather than forcing something to happen, I'll just keep scaling, right? Make them starve on the map. Why are we just like trying to force this to happen? Why not push this top lane in? It's like we didn't get a pick off, right? Just starve them on the map. Like he's... Like this draw is like 8k gold behind you. But she has like a very big high ground advantage. So instead of doing all these things. I can just chill, right? Just lock them inside the base. Okay, so now I don't have BKB. I don't have Aegis very soon. Right? No Aegis, no BKB. So now I have to just go back. You just have to go back here. You just have to go back here. Respect it. Respect the fact that you don't have your items used as dead. And you don't have ages. Just respect it. Literally just respect it. You get glimpsed. Cataclysm. You're so low HP. Wasting a lot of time. And you get glimpsed and you're fucking dead. Right? Why did you die? Because you don't have your BKB. You don't have your ages. Respect it. Respect the fact that the enemy is here to play. And throw th don't throw the game. Right, so now you lost two cores, possibly three cores, and a kill. Boom! The hero that was 8k gold behind you is only 4k gold behind you now. 5k gold, actually. And if we keep doing this, then it's easy. It's just like, if you don't have ages, if you don't have BKB, don't go high ground. Wait for the next rush. It's like, we're ahead, right? If they fight us outside of their base, they're gonna lose. Because we have a 10k lead. We have a lot of items. So force them to come out. Farm their side of the map. Instead of going high ground where they have the advantage. Wait for the next Roche, right? So it's like we took Roche at night time, I think. So we should wait for Roche at night time. That's literally all I want to do. Like push lanes in with Manta. But just keep using Manta and keep pushing in lanes. And keep using it. So you're buying Scotty next. I think you need a Lincoln. It's not a Scotty. Otherwise you will feed. Okay. Okay, so now after we take this Tormentor, I want to see how you play the map. So according to how you need to play the map is... Rush is going to spawn at night time. Night time is going to be in 20 seconds. So we need to play it top. We need to push this lane out. We need to play it top with my entire team. But let's see what we do. Right? We're pushing lanes. This is good. It's fine. And then we're going back here. Right? We're not controlling Rush. We are not controlling Rush. You see, like, when you see it from their perspective, like, if I go Fog Radiant, this is the map that they see. They see that you guys have no clue when they can take this Rush for free. If they're like a better team, they would take it for free. Because you're not pushing that lane in. Now we're trying to fight. Which is like a bad fight. So I'm just gonna send my Lujus to push it in. Need to be careful. They will just glimpse you and you have to pop BKB for it. Oh, you have Lincolns. So you should be fine. But then yes, you have to pop your items. And now you're gonna feed again. Right? So the thing is, we should not be here in the first place. Right? If I'm calling for Roche, my team would be top. We would be playing top, not mid. And then my team would not be feeling like this. So suddenly, there's only 3k gold gap left between me and Drow. And that's going to be completely taken over because I'm going to be dead for the next 80 seconds, right? In 80 seconds, they can take Roche, they can kill a lot of heroes, they can do a lot of things, right?
Look at them. They're respecting the fact the centaur bought back and they just like instantly got out. Right? They're not stupid. So that's the reason why they're going to win this game. Right? And now... But they are stupid enough to not control Roche, which is good for you, I guess. So now again, you're going triangle. Why? Why are we going triangle? It's, this could be good if you push this lane in and then portal top. But it's like you're not thinking about Roche at all. And another thing that I just noticed is you don't have shard on this hero. Okay. So that's actually a really big thing. And I feel like because of your fundamentals, because you're game, playing the game fundamentally wrong, I actually just like looked over the shard. So basically, if you don't have shard on this hero, after you have your BKB, you're just kind of griefing the game. Shard makes you really strong. Why? Because with shard, if draw or anyone attacks me, I have damage reduction, right? With shard... I can actually just run at people and just like kill them with the damage, right? So shard is like really important. Like I have all the items that I need, but I just don't have shard. And and maybe in a lot of these fights, if I had shard, this game would be much better, right? So just like as a tip, always buy shard. Like after this point, basically, let's just go into your items, right? So you got BKB after this point, you need shard. Just literally buy shard and just use it you will see a lot of improvement. There's like nothing more that I can add to it, but except the fact that shard gives you 25% damage reduction and you can also use it to go on them. Okay, so after this point, it's like you have everything you need. You can't exactly buy butterfly against draw ranger. So what I would probably buy here is either satanic or pike. I think pike is like pretty good because it helps you run away from the draw ranger and also the fact that you can actually just like dodge invoker combos without actually committing in. Without actually pressing your BKB, sorry. Okay, now we're playing for Rush. We see these heroes. We have nighttime advantage because of what we have. All right, so. Okay, let's see this fight. You're not going on draw, who's completely out of position. You're going on the worst target. Ah, very bad target prioritization. Look at this. All right, so in this case, your team fight was really horrible. And even if you kill this guy, you probably will die after this. Maybe not. Because of Pavis and Shard, you're fine. But yes, let's look at this again. It actually works out, but it could have been much better, right? Let's just look at this again. Alright, so here, you have like a really good position in terms of your fight. Right? So, you might not know this mechanic, but basically, when your when Draw is on the Glacier, she gets, like basically she gets True Strike. Her attacks won't miss. But if you're also on the Glacier, you also get the same benefits, even if you're on the enemy team. So what you need to do here is that this guy is completely isolated, right? He has BKB and everything, but it doesn't matter. You have Shard. You can just literally run at him, press your Q, and press your Shard and just like burst him, right? She's completely out of position here. She's completely zoned out. She's like kind of sandwiched, right? She cannot go back exactly because you have Centaur on top of her. And then she goes forward, you have three heroes here. So you need to like burst this guy instantly burst this guy and they don't have any damage you don't exactly die if this guy is dead like you're going on cm who just kites you and this draw is just like being a menace and then eventually she dies but you have to expend your bkb usage on the cm because of that you find yourself in a bad position and it does work out but at this point you should go rush since you're low hp okay pick rush use your shard or illusions both are fine okay now we're putting bkb down hmm i would say this is bad because they can just burst you and then they can put disruptor ult on top of it so you need to like put this here and have your bkb up so let's see if you make the same exact mistake again just going high ground right at this point the only difference is that they're actually strong now they actually have items right they're actually pretty fucking strong now comparison before you were like three items ahead of the draw but now it's like it doesn't matter right she's kind of like really farmed and she can press her shard and just like kill you so problem right now is if i go high ground here i'll probably end up briefing this game so what we need to do is i like, keep cutting waves play play swords in the enemy side of the map and just keep playing there till they make a mistake because they will eventually make a mistake it's not like they're the best players in the world who will not make a mistake they will make a mistake and also another thing is that it doesn't really matter that much at this point but at night time you should use your manta to 
basically give vision to your team with the night vision like you're going in you don't have bkb right and then you get killed i'm gonna put this bkb up but you won't be able to use it that easily central goes in press everything but you see like since we don't really have pike we can't go in bkb is used and now they will glimpse you they're gonna glimpse someone okay that's actually pretty fucking good holy shit that was like a really really good gobble up yeah your full hp okay so now like two heroes are dead you can actually just go high ground now now this is fine wait why are you just like not going straight up why are you like staying in here you have this edge where you're fine just fight them why are you scared it's like now they don't have the damage to kill you you can heal up with your madness and your q you can actually just kill them here and end the game but i guess you're too much of a chicken press your q press your q press your q why are you running just press your q and fight region up press your q yeah just fight just fight okay huh let's see then okay this is yeah i didn't think high ground would be this big of an issue in the lower brackets because in my bracket it's not that big of an issue because people actually have the discipline to go high ground and respect the enemy but i guess here it's not the case okay luckily you can just walk out of it this guy doesn't have buyback now we should go high ground this is the time where we can actually go high ground because we have everything and they don't have buyback so here it's like nighttime, right so i should send my illusions in give them vision so centaur can jump because my illusions are gonna have the same aura as i have and they're gonna have night vision right but if i don't give them information the centaur can never jump in and if centaur can never jump in we can never initiate and going high ground versus their lineup is very hard but we have this window where it's 4v5 but since i'm not using my manta to give the vision the centaur can never jump in and they can never throw in the gobble up and if that doesn't happen well it's gg okay so this is the example that i talked about right what exactly do i need mkb for right so draw has butterfly which is understandable but the thing is i do damage with my conda and my level 20 talent i just press q that's my damage right and if that if if he's she's still not dying i'll kill everyone else right you don't need mkb on this hero that often unless you're playing against a hero like pa or wind ranger maybe then it's necessary but in this case it's not right so in this case this is an example right uh, let's just go slightly back it's like, like they use their combos on you right here and now you have to press your bkb but if you had pike you could just pike away from all these combinations of spells so this is why i said the pike would be like a decent buy here like we don't exactly want to like waste our bkb again and again okay okay and you're dead all right i feel like this game's gonna keep going like this and eventually you will lose because you guys are like not learning from your mistakes it's like how many times have you guys died on the high ground you guys have died on the high ground like six times now i think right so if this thing is not being fixed this entire game then of course you are eventually going to lose because you're going to fall off and their heroes are a really strong late game right they're going to have insane amount of damage on this lc they're going to have ags blink on disruptor maybe in refresher they're going to have draw ranger who's going to do a lot of damage so this exactly it's not going to work right this game like anything after this point doesn't really help you like any analysis i do after this point is just like completely useless because the problem right now is that we're not using manta to push out lanes we're not using manta to give vision on the high ground when we actually have the advantage we're not really thinking about what makes us strong enough to go high ground right we're not respecting the fact that if i don't have bkb and if i don't have my ult i should not try to go high ground because i will just instantly die right so when we don't have the things in our favor we should basically respect the enemy and give them something right this is how dota works right it's a game of resource bkb is a resource if i don't have that resource i should wait till i get that resource so i can have the advantage that will help me against their lineup right so there's like a lot of mistakes on the high ground one is that we're just like going high ground without any thinking it's like 5v5 we just go high ground and we end up feeding when we actually had the advantage we don't use manta illusions to give vision to our center so you can jump in right so since we don't do that we just end up on feeding on high ground again it's like it's like if it's 4v5 but you don't have the advantage to jump them then it's essentially is the same exact shit right 
Like even if you go high ground, it's the same exact thing. So you need to change that. And then the other thing is that at minute 20, you didn't take Roche. You're not thinking about Roche in this game. You're not thinking about creep wave timers. You're not thinking about how you want to scale. It's like, it's a 47 minutes game and you have only 510 lasses as a Luna with full map. That's happening because you're just too fixated on going high ground. You're not thinking about how you want to play the map properly. Cut waves, respect the enemy, wait for favorable conditions and then go in. This was like the only situation where you had favorable conditions, which is like it's a 4v5 and I have everything that I need. In this case, all you had to do was send your manta to give vision and then your centaur jumps in and you guys kill them, right? That's the only condition that you have because you don't, you can't really go rush either, right? So other than that, every fight that you took where you died is because you went high ground, you use your ages, you use your BKB and you still decided to fight even after the fact that you don't have the things that you need. So basically, if you want to get good at Dota, if you want to get out of this bracket, try to have enough discipline to understand that in order to make the least amount of mistakes in a game, you need to understand the risks involved in what you're doing. If I'm making a certain move or if I'm playing a certain way on the map, can I die? If the answer is yes, even slightest bit, we need to remove that risk or we need to not do that thing. So when I get ages or when I have BKB, I slightly lessen that risk. You need to focus on that. And then after it's just like, try to play the map better. Once you have the farm, like try to think about how exactly do they kill you and take advantage of that. Like your issues in the game is that definitely you played the lane really badly. And then after that, you didn't know creep wave timers properly and you didn't know who, ki who can kill you. So you didn't get to farm as much as you could. And since you couldn't do that, your timers were like a bit off, slightly off. You didn't buy your shot properly. You didn't take Roche on the right time and you didn't breach high ground correctly and you didn't itemize correctly in the end stages of the game. These are your issues and they're like not that hard to fix, right? So basically, if I had to give you a roadmap, it's like first try to understand creep wave timers and then try to understand how exactly you die. Once you know these two things, you will be much more comfortable showing up on the map and pushing waves, right? And then after that, it's just like, okay, once I have my items, before that, actually, you need to like work on your Manta usage. It's really horrible, but I think you'll fix that once you understand how I want to use my illusion. So the way you want to use your Manta illusions is to farm places that your main hero cannot reach. This is usually dangerous spots on the map. And you can only do that if you know creep of timers. If you don't know that, you cannot do it. After that, okay, it's minute 20. I got my items. I have my BKB, Madness, Manta, Treads, right? Now I need to like look for fights. I'm open to fighting, but that doesn't mean I'm just going to run down towers and go high ground like you did in this game. In this case, you need to take Roche and strengthen your lead and then go high ground. It's like, even if I do feed on high ground, they will use everything. And then when I respawn, we can just kill them and take one side. Very easy, right? Disciplined. And once I get one side, I respect the enemy. I'll go back and wait for the next rush again. During this time, I'll keep scaling my items. I'll log the enemy on the map and keep doing that. If you don't have the resources required to go high ground or fight the enemy, then don't do it. It's that simple. Don't force it because then you're going to lose a lot of games. And these are the issues that you need to absolutely fix. So for Roche, it's like, basically, if Roche is bottom, basically daytime, I'm going to play bottom, going to push the lane out. If Roche is top, I'm going to play top and push that lane out. And that's how you play the map correctly. That's how you play objective to objective. But the biggest thing is to minimize the risk. Minimize the risk. This is the most important advice that I can give you. I feel like after this death, this game is just going to go to like a really bad state. And I feel like based on the results, we do have a spoiler that they won. And I'm inclined to think that you guys will just keep dying and they will just eventually come high ground. They will just end the game because their lead doesn't really go down. If you wish to gain MMR and become a better player, I offer coaching packages where I personally help you to get better. Slots have been opened for May. If you're interested in that or educational discussions, join my Discord linked in the description. Other than that, I'm currently on my road to 10k MMR and stream educational content regularly on my Twitch channel. You can follow it in the description. Also, check out my Patreon where I offer a lot of perks. Lastly, do make sure to subscribe and like the video for more high quality content like this and do let me know your thoughts about this video in the comments.